Running government is an expensive affair. Jumlah diesel subsidi yang kita beri tahun lalu lebih kurang 20 bilion. Kita kena tutup ketirisan duit yang kita kita bayar kepada syarikat-syarikat ini yang tak boleh mendapat subsidi pergi balik kepada rakyat. Kita gunakan untuk membina lebih elok sekolah, klinik infrastruktur yang penting untuk rakyat. For 2024, the Malaysian government has allocated more than three quarters of its 393.8 billion ringgit budget to cover operating expenditure or OPEX. At 303.8 billion ringgit, the OPEX for this year can already be described as a staggering sum, but it is one that we can only expect to rise over time. But why is Malaysia's OPEX so high? It covers a wide array of expenses, including wages for civil servants, pensions for retirees, subsidies, the upkeep of government buildings, and interest payments on our national debt. That debt now stands at an astonishing 1.5 trillion ringgit. The reality is that after servicing our debt and meeting OPEC's payments, Malaysia just does not have much money left to meet its development needs. That is why the government is coming up with ways to fill its coffers. Recently, the government actually increased service tax from 6 to 8%. But that's not all. There are other new taxes, such as the Low Value Goods Tax and Capital Gains Tax, which both came into effect on January 1st this year, and an impending High Value Goods Tax. However, if taxes are increased while our incomes remain stagnant, it will only worsen our financial situation. That's why it is crucial that the incomes of Malaysians rise in tandem with any tax increases. The reality is that the per capita income levels in the country have more or less stagnated, hovering around 11,000 USD per year in the last 10 years. Gaji bagi sebarang pekerja Malaysia kurang dari pada 2,250 ringgit sebulan. Perlu berangka program bagi pendadah siwek. To help Malaysians escape the low to mid-wage trap, the country needs to seriously increase productivity. So the government needs to create high-skilled and better-paying jobs. Up till this point, you will notice that the government would have increased the country's revenue from the additional taxes. It would also obtain large savings from rationalizing subsidies involving fuel, sugar, chicken and electricity. It would also curb smuggling. Now, these funds must go to those who are truly in need. And that is where the central database hub, more popularly known as PADU, comes into the picture. Untuk membangunkan dan mewujudkan satu pangkalan data yang akan menjadi sumber rujukan utama kepada semua agensi kerajaan dalam membuat keputusan berpandukan data yang tepat di samping untuk menambah baik kecekapan penyampaian perkhidmatan kerajaan. It is designed to ensure that moving forward all subsidies reach the deserving recipients. This is of particular significance given that Malaysia is presently grappling with a 52 billion ringgit subsidy bill, the bulk of which is presently enjoyed by those in the higher income brackets. PADU doesn't just focus on individual income, it also considers the financial obligations of an entire household. Even if a person is categorized in the mid to higher income group, if he or she is supporting a large family with significant expenses, PADU takes that into account when determining who qualifies for subsidies. Now that the government manages to fill in the coffers, the next step is to ensure that it is safeguarded from leakages. That is why it is important to eradicate corruption and plug fiscal leakages in the system to prevent public funds from going to waste. In summary, the government has taken a number of steps aimed at turning the country's fiscal trajectory around and enhancing our finances for development purposes. First, they're boosting revenue by implementing additional taxes. However, this must go hand in hand with increased productivity and higher wages. Secondly, they're rationalizing subsidies to maximize savings. Third, they're fighting corruption vigorously to ensure that these funds are not wasted but are instead directed to those who truly need them. All of these to turn around the economy of the country, to pair our debt and gear up towards becoming a high-income country. These measures will undoubtedly be tough. So will the people back the government's turnaround initiatives? Is there enough political will to push these changes through? 
What we know for sure is that significant action is necessary before it's too late. Hannah Kam, FMT Business.